Hello everyone, my name is Dale and welcome to the Talking Stick Show. So I'm joined by my special wizard co-host, Chris Adams. Hello everyone. <laughs> Hello <Yeah>. Chris. <laughs> and we have a special guest on with us today, James Gopala, one of my best friends, or well, my one of my closest friends. So, hello, James. Hey, brother. How are we doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you today? Yeah, good, good. Great to be able to have this virtual conversation with with you both. So, yeah, it's awesome. Good. Thank you. How are you finding everything in isolation? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say I'm in complete isolation. I still see my my parents when I go to yes. the studio to record, um, and. Uh, yeah, obviously, just seeing people on the streets and stuff and going to the shop. So I think the, the main difference is not teaching students, not teaching my classes. But okay. it's, it's all right. I'm, I'm quite enjoying the whole process, to be honest. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool, very man. interesting times. I think everyone's just <laughs> like, what the hell's going on? And so, so before we start, for all those listening, can you tell us a bit about your background, James? <clears throat> Sure, yeah. So I'm um, a yoga Pilates teacher at the Yorkshire Centre for Wellbeing, um, and I work with my own kind of company, Gopala Yoga. Um, Gopala is my spiritual name. It's another name for Krishna. Um, I kind of got into spirituality a long time ago, um, really in my teenage years, and that led me to, in my 20s, to go into India. And I spent five years in India studying in India, studied philosophy and religion there at the university. And I was also studying yoga and Ayurveda, which is Indian traditional medicine. And I think over those years, you know, really from 16 to, to 30, I was going through a lot of changes and, and um, a lot of healing and learning lots of new things. And then, uh, just before I turned 30, I came back to Harrogate and I started teaching at the center, York Center for Wellbeing in Harrogate. The teaching yoga, Pilates, Ayurveda, and doing seminars and workshops and spirituality and all sorts of things. And also building and being part of a community, which obviously is three are part of, which uh, has been great, this process of, of um, kind of putting into practice what I've learned over the the years, but also building the community, which is very, very important to me. So yeah, that's the, the short version, but uh, happy to go into any, any things in more detail if you like. <laughs> Thank you so much. And yeah, so in your own words, James, what does spirituality mean to you? Spirituality for me really means self-awareness. It's being aware of who we are as individuals and being aware of our persona and our ego and our conditioning and our programming from our parents from our past so i think you know we're all we all have this natural true authentic self the self that is is real and beautiful and connected to source and spirit that's just a natural expression of of who our soul is who our truth is but then everything from the past, all the programming, conditioning, trauma, beliefs, it kind of, it's like a heavy weight that stops us from really being who we truly are. And I think spirituality is becoming aware of that, that true essence, that spiritual soul essence, that connection with source, you know, say like self and source for me are the, are the same thing. So when you really connect with the self, or, or source within and you start to have that vision of of our true nature and then we start to become aware of all that crap that we're carrying around with us all the beliefs and the anxieties and the fears and you know all these neurotic behaviors and all this stuff which is stopping us from really being true and authentic and and natural um and so for me that that's what what spirituality is really Beautiful, beautiful. And for you, Chris, what does spirituality mean for you, brother? Well, um, it, uh, it's uh, just an expo exploration of the self and um, uh, your experience with the outer world in connection with your inner 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 uh, feelings and understandings of of um, of life and what what it what it feel uh, how it feels to 
to go through these experiences we, we go through. Um, uh, I very much agree with what, what James says uh, completely. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful, man. What about, you, brother? <laughs> what about you, Dale? What, what's your... How would you uh, so, yeah, spirituality for me um, means finding your own inner self, removing yourself from the shadow. I've been through a lot of negative experiences in my time, in my childhood, and spirituality for me was releasing all the shadow, releasing all the past, and stepping into a present self and understanding death in every moment. Spirituality um, is so important to my life because it's helped me overcome addiction, it's helped me overcome paranoia, anxiety, all sorts of frequencies which have held me back due to the system, due to my, as you were saying, James, as well, programming from the parents, so on and so forth. So spirituality for me, it's, yeah, it's my life at the moment. It's what I'm trying to teach my kids how to, well, different spiritual practices. And another question I wanted to ask you was, why is spiritual practices needed in this time of corona, in this time of confusion? Time of corona, time of confusion. Well, again, I think you mentioned it on your last show. A lot of us have been waiting for the transformation of the planet. And the planet has been transforming and healing. But finally, we're seeing something global, something that's real and that's external. Because a lot of us have been going through these spiritual uh, shifts and it's been a much very much an internal journey and I know we've had this conversation many times but when's something going to happen or oh, this is going to happen this is going to happen <laughs> but like we see little things and things are changing or have been changing but now something massive and major has changing is changing on the planet and I think that's partly due to there's so many people now getting into spirituality so many light workers on the planet so many people who have already kind of started to wake up and in that process of waking up and I think that has this decade is going to be a very very interesting decade a lot of people are saying this you know this where we are at the end of this decade decade or even the end of this year the planet is not going to be the same you know there's there's massive changes you see in the astrology there's a lot of stuff going on you've got Pluto Jupiter Saturn all in Capricorn that, that was on January the 12th. This major crazy alignment, which just doesn't happen. It's so rare. And Capricorn is the sign of institutions and the, 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 you know, the government and the external and, you know, these big planets coming through and just making these massive, massive shifts and changes. And this year, there's a lot of these big shifts and changes um, in the astrology, which again, we're seeing with the coronavirus. So, I think already collectively we've done so much good work that's creating the kind of fall of the system and the collapse of the uh, control and domination uh, system that we live in. Um, but now more than ever, like I think more and more people are just going to start healing and waking up even, even more. So it's like on mass collectively. Um, now there's more time. There's more free time for a lot of people uh, to to do this kind of inner work. So, you know, if we have, if we're in the place where we've got all this, this extra free time, then there's nothing, it's like, you know, especially if you're by yourself or you're not busy, you're just with yourself. And that's yeah. then some people just can't be with themselves. They, they find it very difficult just to be alone because the mind and all the stuff from the past hasn't been dealt with and it all kind of comes up and stuff. So people are going to be forced to deal with their shit, you know, which is great because that's healing. So yeah. now if you're in a, a position where you have, you know, some people are still working and you know, it's just, it's things are they're still busy like, like they were before, but a lot of people have the free time. So now there's nothing better to do now than do just spend. It's not like you've got to spend the whole day in kind of meditation, like you're, you know, you're in a monastery or something. But just to <laughs> look at these other things, look at look at these different modalities. Do practice meditation if you've not practiced it before. Practice yoga. Now there's free time. Catch up on sleep. Catch, you know, rest if you've had a really crazy um, life previously. And it's just that stopping and that pausing and that you know people are going to be forced into reflection because there's not much else to do you know there's only so much netflix <laughs> you can watch right 
So my, mine's just, the uh, polar opposite, brother. I've been forced because I needed to go out and be with people because I was being a hermit. <laughs> yeah. And when I started going out and doing all this healing to be able to uh, connect to more people, uh, being in social situations, this has come at the time where I was going and doing that. And it's like, right, back in your hermit cave now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm I'm just, so I'm just now, getting bro. up. Yeah. I just get walking out the door. It's like back in. <laughs> yeah, but then it's forced it, you know, it's bringing us to this kind of um, virtual connection and get, getting out virtually, bad. which is brilliant as well. And uh, again, there's going to be so much more material and content out there for people to, to watch and to follow. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity for personal transformation with, with this situation. Yeah. So you've been running a successful business for quite a long time. I've actually done meditations at uh, James's Centre. We've pretty much been friends for how many years now, James? Have we known each other? I think, well, we must have met in 2013 because that was my 2013. first full year. Yeah, yeah. and I remember when I met you, I, um, it was at Health Shop, ABC Shop in Harrogate. And I, was, I felt lost because I didn't really know anybody <laughs> at the time. And I looked to the right and there was a picture of you, you know, the one uh, where you've, you've um, sat and I think you had a poster up there for the York Centre for Wellbeing. Uh, oh, and I saw one, it and I went, yeah. oh, there's a wizard out there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's another one there. It's not, I'm not, it's not just me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the great thing. We've just, a night with them, Chris joined the centre maybe a year yeah. or two after that. It's just, yeah. it feels like we're like these little needles in a haystack. And we've just kind of been drawn to each other over the years. And it, it's great that we've connected and, it's so yeah. uh, it's just so important to to have close friends that you can share this journey with because what's the point otherwise you know it's just Definitely, it can yeah. be a lonely road the whole spiritual path because you do you know have to break free and cut away from n- the norm and normality and, yeah. and so Thanks. to to have friendships and friends you can i mean we all do ceremony together and you know we do meditations together and also and, and just it's great you know, to have your brothers as, as close friends and to be able to do yeah. this stuff. Definitely, dude. And yeah, it just reminded me of something when I did go through my own spiritual awakening around about 2012, there was a big, going back into spirituality, there was a big call for, my ego was kicking out, being terrible. And I was kind of like, right, I am spiritual now. And I was distancing myself from people. And through the, through the years and years, I've really dig deep and look to myself and understood my ego because ego is i'd say the opposite of spirituality ego is something we are formed it's our parasympathetic and um when we're young when we're about eight or nine years old it seems our ego starts forming and um it kind of it gets to that point where we do need to do the great work to understand our ego make peace for ego because we all have ego i've still got ego at the moment and sometimes i look back and maybe that was from a place of ego so going back onto the corona, James, how is it affecting your business then, or this coronavirus? So, I mean, obviously we're not able to teach face-to-face classes now. Um, so we've gone online and we have like an online booking system. So people are still booking in as normal, but instead of them actually coming to the center for the classes, we're actually sending them the, the videos of pre-recorded classes so I'm recording okay. every day um, during the week, and um, and then every morning I'll send out the videos to people who who have booked in. So obviously not everyone has continued, but a, a large percentage have, which is great, um, and we've been getting some really positive feedback. And I felt personally that as part of my spiritual journey this year, it's been doing more kind of videoing and social media. So it's strange how the universe has just kind of kind of pushed me to, to do this work. Um, and, and it's, yeah, I've really enjoyed it so far. It's only been a couple of weeks, um, but I've really, I've really enjoyed the process and, uh, you know, I feel, yeah, I feel very relaxed about it all and, you know, even, even enjoying the process, but I think everyone's been, is being asked to step up in different ways. Yeah, I mean, how, how, how are you stepping up, Chris? How would you say what the situation, I mean, obviously us doing this is awesome and that's part of that process, but what about you, Chris? How are you, how are you being? How, how, do, you, how do you mean, brother? How is the universe kind of asking you to step up or did you feel you're being called to, to step up? In it? 
I feel I feel right now when we're in this uh, state of isolation, um, I feel I feel the universe is is um, is really it, like it has been already, um, but it's been calling me more to um, uh, step up in a in a way of uh, being more service to others and to um, provide provide help for those that really need it and. Um, I've, I don't feel like I'm fully addressing it uh, in in a way, but um, uh, I do feel I do feel called more to do that now. Um, now I've got all of this uh, spare time because uh, for from for my my uh, em, employer is uh, uh, we've completely shut down, um, so they're now uh, re- trying to redeploy. Is in the process of redeploying to some sort of. Uh, area uh, where, where we're most needed but that that is taking its time so uh uh for, for me it's it's more uh, uh for service to others and, and also myself as well i feel like uh, uh yeah man i i've been um doing a lot more giveaways lately that's something i've been needed to give back um i've had a, a reading over the winter called the giveaway the native american giveaway which is giving my gifts out uh, selling myself more. Last few years have been very hard. I feel like this year I've done a lot of training. Uh, I've done training for about, I'd say, how many years now? Since 2013, I did my angelic Reiki. And uh, on from there, I kind of dive deep into the meditation, teaching meditation, teaching angelic Reiki. But the lifetime I left before that was totally different. I was out taking drugs, etc. And I went, had this spiritual awakening. Um, I take, I took DMT at some point and I was shown my ancestors show me something and I kind of pushed away from that world. And for me lately, I've had to go back and visit me and James were talking about this when we went on for a walk, I had to go and revisit the past to let the past die because that frequency was still inside me. So yeah. now I feel the universe for myself is pushing me to reach people who are, have been where I've been, reach people who are lost, reach people in addiction. I've done, I've done the work. I feel like I've done a lot of um, speaking, a lot of talking. I've done meditations. I'm quite, um, me like me and James, we had at one point, we had 30 people come into the spring equinox. It was a huge victory for me. Uh, yeah. We had some great numbers. Like I look back at pictures and I'm like, wow, it's just, it's, I, t- I do take things for granted. And that's what something I'm learning at the moment. The universe is showing me to count my victories, to count what I've done in the past. Because like me, James and Chris, we've done some great work together. We've had ceremonies, which, which words can't even describe how beautiful the ceremonies were. So the universe for me, I feel like it's pushing me to help people to have this talking show, to speak to more healers, teachers, and help people who are stuck. Because I do feel like a lot of people are going into fear and panic and they're looking for ways for healing. They're looking like some people are talking to me. I haven't talked to her in a long time. And I'm like, why are these people talking to me? Because they're scared. They don't know mm-hmm. what's going on. They want someone to validate and make them feel safe or give them saying it's all right. So a lot of people have been messaging me, which I've messaged back, but I do feel the universe is pushing me to reach more people and push myself. It's hard for me. When I first did my first show with Chris, I was really nervous. It was, I was so nervous at the start, but once I started going, I was all right. And it's like, it was okay. That's yeah. okay. And my mind was just it's telling okay me It's okay to be nervous as well, you know. It's, it is, yeah. It's, and it's, it's being nervous like, and feeling the fear and just doing it anyway, like having the courage to do it and being vulnerable. And I think that's a big part when you put yourself out there. Everyone feels fear and anxiety yeah. and, and gets nervous about it. But it's like just but still being able to do it and knowing that, yeah. you know, and having the, the confidence and the courage to do it. And I think it's it's a really important thing actually. And I think some people can be like, Oh, you know, why are they getting online and blah, blah, blah. It's just, but yeah. I think maybe people have self-worth issues might, might project and judge yeah. others. But I think other people like, you know, good on you, good on you for doing that. It's awesome. Yeah. You know, and I think we're, we're all. Definitely, dude. I, I remember the, cause I think the first meditation I did with a group, I think I did one before somewhere, but it was at the wellbeing center and 
that first initiation of when people were looking at me like, shit, I have to talk now. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's that myself, I remember looking up and there was, um, I think we had probably just under 20 people and there just loads of people turned up and I was looking around like, shit, I'm going to have to talk now, don't I? Like, my mind was just, and all these defeating programs were, were trying to make me go, you can't do it, you're going to mess it up, so on and so forth. And through the time and through discipline and through pushing myself out there, I've been able to do it and I've been able to break out of not talking. Uh, I've had talking issues when I was younger. Uh, my parents didn't talk as much. So I've never really been able to talk about my feelings, truly. Mm. I've been going through my life just not saying anything, just saying like uh, some well, of our... Just presenting a, an image or a persona, you know, and like it. the spiritual, yeah. you know, I'm the spiritual guru, you know. And, but really, you know, we all have we all have issues, we all have fears, we all have anxieties yeah. and... And this journey, this process is, is, you know, recently has just been about being vulnerable and like being yeah. honest and being real and being authentic yeah. and just like, no one's perfect. No one's trying to be yeah. perfect. You know, we, we've all got our things. We've all got our issues. We've all got our anxieties, but, you know, still yeah. we're prepared to, to put ourselves out there and do this yeah. work, you know, and, you know, I think it's also, I think you've done a great job and a lot of respect to you for, you know, with your family and stuff. I know you're a great dad and you've got a lovely setup, you know, where you are now in York. It's awesome. And um, again, it's about counting your victories and, you know, and just being like, yeah, you know, and also some of the work we, we did or when you organized those um, drumming circles and ceremonies when we went to um, Thornborough Henge Thornbrook, and yeah. Paint, <laughs> Paintley, that was epic. Yeah. You know, like yeah, 30, man. 40 people drumming in sacred sites and we should so do that do that again when we get through all this craziness, all this <laughs> craziness. should we set up an event bro next yeah year? <laughs> yeah Bring social distancing right you are like 20 meters apart we'll drum <laughs> <laughs> or we'll be on the on the on the zoom drumming but uh, yeah no respect you know respect to you and, and it's it's great and uh, respect to you too as well cheers brother yeah, so I, and, and you've great been been a great friend, a, a great teacher as well. I do feel that Chris as well, that we are close soul family, and we are here to raise each other up and le learn from each other. And so it's been great to have that relationship and someone to be uh, someone who is grounded as a friend. Um, I've not had many friends who have been very grounded or into the spiritual practice, or if I have, I've, I've tried to be friends with different people, but. They just don't, I don't, not get on with them, but I just, they, they're not, I don't know, it's it's like a soul frequency, isn't it? Your soul family, you really understand when you meet them that it's just a different frequency. And I do believe when we do the great work, um, it's easier to meet our soul family. When I went through the healing, I was introduced to James, I was introduced to Chris, so on and so forth. So doing the great work is so important for you to be able to find your true friends, find the yeah. friends who don't hold you back anymore. Because I've had friends who have hold me back, who want to bring me down, lower my frequency. And it's about letting go of the past, letting go of the garbage and moving forward. Yeah. It's like so letting go of the old identity and the old life. And that, you know, definitely when I went to India and I left, you know, I was a certain person. And when I came back, completely different. And I guess in a sense, I was lucky to have that gap in between where... I had a few, you know, a few friends coming back, like old school friends and stuff, but maybe they had families or they're still like going out and, and drinking. And so it's just, you know, there's, there's just not that same frequency match. I mean, whereas, you know, who, who's going to listen to stuff about aliens and, you know, angels and system of control and domination and all this craziness. So yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's that when you feel, it's that soul family. And, and um, I can't remember which teacher said, but when your soul family come together, you're so powerful. We're so powerful. Like individually, we, we can be powerful. But when we get together collectively, when we do ceremony together, it might probably have been Andrew Bartz's. Like yeah. we're so powerful as, as, a, as a soul group, as a soul family. So, yeah, it's been a while since we've done a ceremony together. So <laughs> looking yeah, forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and moving forward on to ceremony, I spoke to Chris last week about ceremony. What's your view on ceremony, James, and why is ceremony so important in this time of change? Mm. So I think ceremony is an outward expression of your 
um, intentions and it's a, it's a message to your subconscious and a message to the external forces, the benevolent forces, um, and it's working externally with energy. So I think when you are on this path, ceremony becomes naturally becomes important part of, of your life. And, you know, your life, the focus of your life moves from just sort of more mundane things to being, okay, like we were saying back to the original question, what is spirituality? So the intention is to be spiritual, self-aware, aware of oneself as much as you can. And so ceremony is just a way to reinforce and to remind the psyche that you are being self-aware. So for example, yeah. in the morning, the first thing I do when I wake up, I'll burn Palo Santo and I'll just bless my room and I'll bless myself. And then I'll go and do my meditation and breathing practices, um, my kriya. So it's kind of like my intention to start the day is I'm not picking up my phone and I'm not doing these other things. My intention is I start as I mean to continue and starting in ceremony, even if it's just burning um, some sage or something. And again, it just brings you into a frequency. Not only does it kind of create a sacred space and a, and a, a good energy and protects the space around you and cleans any negative energy off the aura, but it's just setting that intention and to your subconscious that okay this is the frequency that i want to move forwards in this day and that is going to hold this day and then yes of a ceremonial life and i think we all have a ceremonial life to a greater or lesser extent it's, it's just keeping things as sacred as we can when you eat eating you know, in a, in a sac sacred manner. So for me, I like to be in this room looking out into nature and I'm just calm and centered. Now, it's not always like that. And especially, I imagine with kids, it's, it can be difficult. <laughs> always then, no, no, it isn't. <laughs> it's easy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're all just like meditating. Get out the goddamn room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, like that's a challenge yeah. if that ever happens. And yeah, that, that's, that must be one of the biggest learning experiences ever. I can't even imagine. Right, but. <laughs> and and for that talking about ceremony so me like i've said before me james and chris have had many hours of ceremony together and it's brought us deeper our friendships um you feel like with friendships you can only go so far but when we have a ceremony together our friendship deepens and we have a um a connection to each other which is even deeper than before me and my wife gabrielle have do, been starting to do ceremonies together and our relationship has really evolved and changed because we've been listening to each other fully. And I've been taking her dreams, her ideas. Uh, I've been listening to her as fully and being aware. And it's making me more of aware of how I am as a person. So when I'm going into ceremony, how am I shutting down? How am I getting myself into that space to be able to create with my heart? So it was, it's been great to do that with my partner. And for all of those out there who haven't done ceremony or have a partner and you've got ma marriage issues or relationship issues or uh, issues with yourself, ceremony is so, so, so important. Without mm -hmm. ceremony, I feel like I'd be a lot, I don't know where I'd be really. I, I don't think I'd be more balanced because each day we're kind of going to one. So yeah, what about you, Chris? Sorry, I was just going to say, I think for you, Dale, yeah, it is sorry. your spiritual expression like for myself i'll do meditation yoga and and ceremony but i think you're you're more shamanic in that respect like we all have our different ways of expressing ourselves and practicing spiritually i think for me i'll always be more of a yogi who pra who practices ceremony via meditation yoga but you're yeah. more shamanic in the sense that for you your spiritual practice is burning the sage getting the rattle getting into your heart center in, in, a, in that way and it's just a slightly yeah. different variation of it so um, many avenues back to the creator so exactly, many roads exactly going back the same exactly the same source That's it. what about yourself chris uh well, your thoughts on we talked about it a bit last week your thoughts today on ceremony and how ceremony has impacted you and how has it impacted your friendship with me and james yeah i think it definitely uh, it, it's created this um reality and this idea of my in my life of of connecting deeply uh on a family level to other uh, other other people um that, that are not necessarily my um close family my 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 birth family 
um, which is, is a wonderful thing to to experience so that you know you don't have to just um, you know if you want to feel the essence of home uh, if you feel like you need to, to to come home to a certain comfort um, it doesn't have it, it, it doesn't have to be your 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 parents your your brother sister auntie uncle it doesn't have to be that it can be it can be anyone and that that open it our friendship truly opened me up to the idea that that is possible. Um, coming up to this, our our, um, our soul re- re- reunion, um, you know, I, I understood that idea, but I, I never um, could feel it um, authentically. And it really is it really is so wonderful to experience. So, um, but yes, my 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 view on on ceremony as well. I think I, I mentioned last time that. Um, uh ceremony uh when starting your own ceremony is is, is again uh not to um live up to an expectation of uh, say like you've experienced a ceremony a group ceremony and you've um come across people that are very well experienced they've been doing ceremonies for a long time um but i think when you first start a ceremony you don't want to try and replicate someone else's ceremony or try to live up to a certain expectation. I must need, I must have this, I must have, I must use this tool, I must do this, because other people are doing that. So I think, uh, as I said before, I think really starting off is just to connect with yourself. A personal ceremony is just, mm-hmm. is just the way to do it. And that's how, you, it, how, that's how the fire inside you kindles and it then goes on to affect um, and can, you'll uh, connect with others like we have done. We, we had... We had done that self work, and uh, with because of that self work, we had uh, naturally been drawn to each other. Beautiful. So, so James, thank you, Chris. So, James, going back to ceremony, why would it be important for people to protect the space before they go into some sort of spiritual practice? Would you be able to explain the mechanics of why it's important to protect your own space and make it sacred? Yeah, it's it's a good question. Because there are those that would say, well, why do you need to protect your space? If, if everything's just love and I'm, if everything's 5D, then nothing can harm me. And then, you know, there's no need to, to do that. And I've heard that argument a few times. The thing is, I don't think anyone's <laughs> in <laughs> 5D <laughs> enlightenment just yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so, I'm you know, like maybe Matt Kahn is, but <laughs> 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 maybe he can just, just with his frequency, he can get rid of those nasty energies but for the rest of us like the thing is there's we can only see a very tiny spectrum of reality like visible light it's a minute spectrum of the entirety of reality there's a lot out there which we just can't see um you know we even have the light spectrum we have infrared and ultraviolet and you know these microwaves and radio waves we just can't see there's a lot of stuff we can't see and then that's again just a very small percentage of the entirety of of energy on the planet so we are uh, there are other forces other energies at play in our lives that we just cannot see with our physical eyes um, but they're there just because we can't see them doesn't mean they don't exist so when we open sacred space and when we burn incense and when we um, protect our walls and protect our space, we're, we're creating, I think we're doing two things. One, we're setting the intention to the subconscious. Okay, now is time to go into meditation or into a spiritual state and it becomes kind of conditioned. So when you smell sal- Palo Santo, you're subconsciously, you've been conditioned to know, okay, this is time for the ceremony and you just it's easier to go into ceremony into that meditative state secondly in all traditions there is some form of cleansing yeah so you'll you'll notice that if you go say for example the worst place is if you go into like a doctor's surgery and the energy there (laughs) is so thick and so heavy and it's just this horrible (laughs) energy it's like can you just burn some sage (laughs) it was so nice (laughs) it's just like because the energy you can literally (laughs) feel it it's so dense and that's an extreme example, but there's energy comes from anywhere. If someone's, you know, thinking negatively towards you or, or say there's some sort of external projection onto you. And again, it can be non-physical beings. There are non-physical beings. There are ghosts. There are parasitic ent- entities. There are vampiric entities. 
yeah there are demonic entities these things are real um so and they you know you often hear people who do tarot for example if they're not protecting themselves properly then these not so pleasant energies can start to influence in and, and come through so what you're doing not only you're telling yourself right time it's time to go into a meditative state but you're also literally energetically protecting your your um the directions you know the the your boundaries you're creating this energetic spiritual protective boundary to firstly clear away anything that you might be holding it could be your energy can negative yeah. energy that you've been holding on to um and kind of shedding that with the with the incense and things like that and then also just protecting the space and calling in the angelics calling in the ancestors calling in the benevol benevolent forces call them the allies you know all those beings that are there to help us and there are many and yeah. you'll say and just getting rid of the the negative energies and the negative entities that can kind of manipulate or kind of affect the uh the the ceremony so for me it's a very very important very very important um to to do that and before i sleep that's the time that every night i'll do i'll call in the directions so the seven directions um to the four corners uh, and then up above below and within um and because for me sleep is a ceremony and when we sleep we go into the astral realm and in the astral realm you have lots of you know different beings and energies there and so i i found if if i don't do my protection i can have um sometimes some uncomfortable uh, experiences in in the dream world so for me it gives me that protection that energetic protection and and so you're just creating that vortex of positive energy protective energy which then it, it's like setting this scene or setting those boundaries so that you can then go into ceremony and go into those meditative states where arguably you are more vulnerable and you can do it safely and you can do it more effectively um so for me personally and i know for, for us it's it's really really important and um it's something you know just like burning incense regularly clearing the energy just something that do pretty much daily yeah and for all those healers listening or all those journeyers listening yeah very important um protecting the space i went to a lady a few months ago in york and i went for a reiki he reiki healing and she didn't protect the space at all so i had to do the protection myself it's very very important i've had personal from personal experiences i've had clients who've come around to my house um, with ghosts, with other sort of frequencies have brought into the space and my dream space has been affected. My dreams have been negative through that. So it's very, very important to be spiritual hygienic and make sure your energies of your room is clean. And like James says, protecting yourself before you go to sleep. So is there any, anything you'd recommend James for protecting yourself for someone who's new listening, just protecting themselves during the day? just mm. when they're out there, out in the population and so on. Yeah, I think there, there are different techniques. Some people use visualizations, so like a golden uh, egg or sphere, a protective sphere of energy around someone. Other people use the violet light, the violet flame to protect themselves. For me, I use um, geometry. So okay. before, I think something like doing a reiki training is really helpful like if you do a sui a reiki you learn the symbols and there's chukure which is yeah. one of the symbols and it's like a spiral and that's creating um prote protection so yeah. in the past i used to i always use incense and that's more of a clearing or i use palo santo these days that's more of a yeah. cleansing and then i use protective energy i originally i would put the chukure and i'd bring it onto myself um, and now I use the pentagram, which is the five pointed star, which for me is the most powerful, um, ge geometry there is. Um, so I, I think something like that, if you set the intention, you visualize is, is a very effective way, especially if you're doing work like you're doing hands on healing. Cause I used to do that massage and Reiki. Um, and I found that if I forgot to do that energetic, those visualizations, I remember I used to put on, I think, the cloak of Archangel Michael, like a blue cloak, and then yeah. I'd do all sorts, geometry, golden egg, all sorts. And if I forgot to do that, then it's, it's crazy how 
uh, vulnerable and how empathic yeah. you can be when you're healing. And I was mm-hmm. just taking it all into my body. I was feeling their pain in my body and I was literally taking that energy in. So it's absol- if you're doing a hands-on healing, it's absolutely essential to do some yeah. sort of protection. You might use more angelic en- energies, bringing your angels, covering you in light. There are so many different ways um, but I'd certainly recommend calling in your guides and guardians, angelics, using geometry if you can learn that, using visualizations like a golden orb or learning um, the the violet flame. I can't remember the saying that they say, but yeah, there's a, there's some powerful using the, the violet flame. Yeah, yeah. There's so many different ways. It's just really what resonates with 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 you. But I th- yeah. personally, I really like using geometry. That's that's my favorite. What about you, yeah. Chris? Um, for me, um, I, I have tried uh, the geometry. It, it, it worked to a certain extent. I, di- I didn't quite... Um, I think for, for me, it was more uh, using um, uh, col- column energy. So like a column coming down to the top mm. of your crown chakra there. And just um, completely uh, just shooting straight down, aligning everything, get it right grounded down into the earth like tree roots, you know, right into the core. Yeah. And just like the energy that's coming down there, you, you hold that and just and get, and get it moving and moving and energizing it really, really strong. And then start to just push everything out with it. So start from every single chakra, every single part of the body, down to the feet, everything. So I, I use more something like that and then just radiate, radiate it outward and then create like a shell around it. So in, in a sense, it's, more, it's like the egg that you've been talking about, James. Now we've heard so much about um, the gold, you know, the gold energy as well, the, the gold of um, the gold color of the higher intuition and the, the higher self. And um, yeah, definitely call, calling upon the higher self as well, just really aligning with that just by affirming and saying it. Um, it's, it's such a great just way to, um, uh, not, not so much, uh, pr- protect or rid yourself from any, 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 uh, attaching energies, but, um, just to keep your, just to help to keep your mind in the right place. Um, if, if the energies, uh, that you're experiencing are slightly too overwhelming or, um, there's so many ways, there's so many ways to go about it really, isn't there? Um, and it really is what, whatever works for you. Um, yeah. Uh, what about yeah. you, Dale? What, what do you uh, like to do? Yeah. So my, um, <clears throat> the way I do my protection is I always make sure with my out loud voice, I am saying, it, I do believe voice is so powerful and to manifest, uh, manifest things here in this reality, I use my voice to say it. So I'd be saying I call to my personal energy field to be protected. I always speak to my aura and I always tell my aura and my body, my spirit, what I don't want in my life, what I don't, I don't want people's projections or I don't want people's verbal vomit. Because when we do go out there, it's an absolute war zone at times if you're not protecting yourself. Yeah. I went to um, a pantomime a few weeks ago for Gabrielle's granny's birthday and I totally forgot to protect myself because I was so in engulfed in the car journey or the kids and stuff like that so I went into this small hole and it was like probably about seven rows and it was a small circle and there were so many people in there and everyone was drinking and and I could just I just went in there without protecting myself and I could pick up all of everyone's energy next to me because I was like crammed in with them all and that got a bit too overwhelming so I had to literally get out of there call my protection before I started going um getting on with the night so I'd use my own words calling to my energy to be protected. I always place a mirror in the middle of me and behind me and say that this mirror is from anybody else's projection sent at me today is going to be sent straight back to them in zero debt, in true love. So I use a mirror technique. I use calling to my personal energy field. I use a bubble of protection as well. So it's important I do this throughout the day because my energy does get scattered at some points when I don't uphold it and I don't keep saying it to myself. Like I'll do it in the morning, I'll need to do it again in the afternoon, I'll need to keep up upkeeping it basically and to call into my body, telling my aura to still be protected because it sometimes you can go out there and there can be those vampire energies where someone is just basically ready to drain the shit out of you. And if you call into your own body, telling yourself you're manifesting your own reality with your own words, if you invoke like invoke a, a peaceful day, I invoke 
protection, I am protection, stuff like that. So yeah, using my own words is probably the most powerful I have found in my own experience. Uh, before I'm going to bed as well, I'm calling to my ancestors to protect me. I call to my DNA memories for positive dreams. And I ask my ancestors, bodyguards and dream time celestial warriors to protect me. So there's many different forms of using protection. Mm. So yeah, so yeah, that's it's my... difficult because then you can walk around like, and you just go, oh, stay away, stay away, protection, protection, and and then it does create that kind of division. So yeah, yeah. you know, it'd be interesting. What do you think about the concept of just loving everything and loving everyone, as opposed to kind of like stay away, stay away, like as a as a, uh, a for, even a form of protection, that kind of just yeah. like loving everything as an expression of spirit. Yeah, I, I feel there's, for myself, from my own experience, I feel there has to be a balance with that. There has to be a balance of who you're giving your love to. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a funny one that sometimes I do feel like I want to be like that. But when I do, when I've done that and tried to go out and love everything, I've drained the shit out of myself because all I've been doing is throwing out my energy. I don't know if for anybody else, but I've been giving out yeah. my energy thing. So yeah. at work, I'm like, right, I'm going to go out and I'm going to love everyone. But for my, for me, it doesn't work. Uh, it makes me more drained. But it's finding the balance, James, um, mm. is finding the middle ground of making sure when you speak to someone, you give them the responsibility, the respect of you sharing that your heart with them. And if they, they want to engage more, you share more of your aura with them. Mm. But I do believe it's important to be protected when you're going out. So because... You go into York and there's all these sorts of strange folk abroad. There's all like these people walking around and you can just tell the riddles with demons and they look at you and they can sense that, I don't know, they can sense something about you and they stare at you and you're like, oh shit. So I do feel if I was giving away much love, which I'm, yeah, the light, uh, there's a lot of light workers out there who do give themselves away too much in my own opinion, my own judgment. I know that's not the best to do. But I've done it before and it's drained the shit out of me where I've tried to be this happy, loving everyone person. But it tends to use a lot of my time and energy. What about yourself, James? Yeah, no, I kind of agree. And it is it's difficult because some there are times, um, especially when I'm in a good place, like I'm, I'm in India and I'm on holiday and stuff. I'm just yeah. saying everything is consciousness. Everything is source. Sarvam Chaitanya. Yeah. Everything is an expression of God. Everything is God. And when I'm in that place... It's amazing because nothing can threaten you because everything is to yeah. source. Um, but that's when I'm walking along the beach and it is, you know, beautiful and <laughs> get up, I'm just get up, like get completely up. chilled out. And then you get to like <laughs> Harrogate. Or, and st- I'm not thinking of the Well, sometimes I am actually. I'm trying to get more in that place. It's, yeah, like you said, it's, um, it's a balance because everything is, everything is source. Everything is divine. Yeah. Um, because that everything there's only one reality and that's consciousness and we are that consciousness so i am more in that frequency these days of just seeing everything as divine but at the same time you still have to be very careful with like who you give your energy to and like when you're interacting with people and sometimes you know you just certain people you're just going to avoid um but i don't know i don't know if that is the 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 best I think it's when you interact with people, you're coming from heart center, but it's just yeah. if you feel that person is starting to drain you, you have to put those boundaries. Yeah, man. And I find that even with family members, like you might come from a place of love, but still you need those boundaries because that person may be draining you or parasiting your energy, yeah. unbeknown to them, but it's just that protection. What about you, Jesus? for those who don't know chris chris is a big heart chakra kind of person so you i know like with your naturally quite loving would you say chris well thank thank you brother but um uh you know i think i think we all have our um a different different levels and different <laughs> ways of uh, ex- expressing love, but um, uh, yeah. So, what what are you asking? Sorry, <laughs> I keep getting lost in all these. This you're beautiful, the, energy. It's wonderful. It's great. <laughs> so what was the question? <laughs> what do you think about the balance between giving love oh. to everyone 
all the time and loving everything as yeah. an expression of, yeah, of so, source, uh, but also having healthy boundaries and protecting yourself. Yeah, yeah. Now, I think uh, I think when when you start when uh, you start coming online to um, you know the, the idea that you know we're, we're really being um, we're in, we're in this control system and you know we, you know when I went through my um, time uh, w which I mentioned in the last video um, uh, about really understanding what's going on this big picture of everything uh, I think this uh, almost like a something just turns on inside you that you like you need to like start getting out there and just giving everyone just unconditional love and and I, I, I did that to start with, and I was, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and it was a, it was a real it was a really good trip. Like, it was a good high. It was great. I, I and I still do it now too, but it's it's more of a, con a, a controlled controlled way. Mm. Um, but but definitely, I think at first, like you, you can't contain it. Well, for me, it was I, I couldn't I couldn't contain this this urge. Um, to want to connect more with people, and uh, the more I did connect with with certain folk, you know, um, um, more people in of, of that vibration, of that perspective, the more I wanted to just amplify it and and bring it into other, other people. But but you know, as 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 Dale said, I think you said Dale. I think we're both, we've both we've all said it. But um, uh, you know, well, when you are holding this this frequency. Um, that is, you know, of, you know, unconditional love and, and, you know, just a really high, you know, just contained vibe. Uh, and, you know, you get some freaky looks, man. Mm -hmm. Like, so, you, know, you walk by someone else, someone's just looking at you like, what? <laughs> hey! He's like, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And for some people, they, they can freak out. They, they freak mm -hmm. out and they, they can't understand why. They'll try and project yeah, they sort of unconsciously just projects like their their own problems onto you, and, and yeah, it's really, really, really bizarre sometimes. Mm. Um, so do you get that in your work? I know you've said, uh, in, yeah, you know, yeah, you're working in the, for the council at the Hydro Swimming Pool Lifeguard. Yeah, yeah I, I found it hard for a while when I came back from university, and and um, uh, I started to pick up more shifts there, and I, I do I do like that that work. Um, because the, there's so many kids around. I don't think I mentioned in the last video that I, you know, I work as a lifeguard in the swimming pool. Um, so there's so many kids around. So there is that beautiful, innocent, um, just divine energy. It's a wonderful energy. There's so many, it, it really outnumbers the, the dark energy uh, quite a lot. And you can see the struggle between the two to try and keep this balance it's, it's really fascinating to to be to be there and i think that that dynamic is such a really it really what, what it really is what holds me there to i mean i've for many a times i've been trying to say you know no I, I can't do this anymore it's too much but um you know when i'm right in the middle of it there I, it, it's really it really feels like you know uh, yeah I mean, i'm in the cinema <laughs> yeah i'm in the cinema almost but um uh, I think it's difficult for those who are in the system and trying yeah, to bring yeah. this energy and maintaining that energy because I know yeah. we've had many conversations where you've Absolutely. had conflict with your boss because you're like being rebellious <laughs> or just being like naturally just more yeah. natural and you're, you're yeah. rubbing up against the hierarchical yeah. system. Yeah, I yeah. think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. I think. Uh, I think where, when you do hold that. Um, that energy of, of vibration, a very strong, um, you know, not 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 like we're detached from each other, but you know, I am my own frequency. I'll, I'll hold it as my unique expression, and my the energy then I project is that um, I, you know I am I am at peace with the frequency you're at, and I, I am I am allowing you to be as you will, mm. and that, that energy. I think I I have learned that managers do have a hard time under, understanding. Um, understanding that, and I think they feel a bit intimidated. And obviously, if a man, if some some managers, uh, their ego kicks in, like they're just like, you know, they, uh, you know, they might feel very intimidated, and they might feel like they need to, you know, lay down the law, or put the foot down. Uh, when you know, I, it's not really the amount necessary. of people, the amount of people I've worked with who don't even ask how I am, and I always ask, always ask yeah. how they were. 
not even a question to how are you kids or yeah. how are you today narcissistic narcissistic people. yeah 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 <laughs> um, and you know if, if any people from my work end up end up watching this um you I, know, love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much <laughs> But, you know, I, I do feel, you know, I, I ask, um, I think, I think more so in, in the past, I, I, you know, I, I could be wrong completely because, you know, everyone, I understand that people like to, to, to just go to work, do the job and go home, which I'm completely, completely fine with. Most of the time I do do that. Um, and also for my job, we're not really supposed to talk that much because we're meant to be maintaining our, yeah. you know, our eyes and our, our energy on the pool. And um, and people in the pool, but um, you know, I, I do feel that I've I've asked, I, I do sometimes know more about other people than they know about me. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, so it's finding that it's like like James was on about the balance. It's so important finding the balance, and so many people are told to be dark, told to be light, but again, the neutrality teachings are so important by finding the balance, finding the neutral perspective in the middle of everything. And being as an observer, being there as a manifesting being of the now, but not going into judgment, not going into polarity, but just being fully there, present, experiencing it and not letting all the programs come up, which get us into the anger, which get us into the judgment or the, the argument, so on. Um, so, yeah, I think balance. Do you, feel, do you feel, James, as well, is a good neutr neutrality? Is yeah, I think it's, it's you don't want to get into fear. You know, sometimes yeah. like you feel the need to protect, but... I think the thing is, if you're a certain frequency, you're going to be getting a frequency match and a reflection of who you're interacting with day to day. And so, you know, hopefully who you're interacting with all those interactions are going to be a reflection kind of of your energy. So say, for example, when I'm at work, I'm teaching most of the students are lovely who I teach and I'm always having a very positive interaction. Some interactions can be more challenging, I'm talking more about sort of family, things like that. But generally speaking that reflection is is always um is always very positive um so i think that i think the attitude should be to be as 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 open uh, open as loving and non-judgmental and as accepting like chris was saying as possible to give yes. people the space for them to be authentic and real and to really give someone your energy really give someone your attention really look them in the eyes and really like just acknowledge them as a human being, even if they have fears and anxieties. And, you know, they're just, they're just a human being. We're all the same at the end of the day. We're all in this together. But again, yeah. if you feel yeah. someone is attacking you or draining you, parasitic, parasitic, like parasitic energy coming from them, you definitely have to put the boundary. And I think, yeah, it's like you're saying, it's just having the balance, knowing what's appropriate and... and I think the general attitude is love, acceptance, but as soon as that dodgy energy comes in, it's just putting up that boundary and protect because it's self protection. That's self love. Yeah. Boundaries yeah. is boundaries are incredibly important. Having 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 appropriate and healthy boundaries is, is really key. Thank you. And what would you recommend for so for people going into the future, James, for what's about to unfold here on the earth? Um, what do you feel people uh, giving them advice? What do you feel people should be doing? Or is there anything which can help them let go of fear, let go of the future, the uncertainty and the unknowing? I think we're all on our individual journeys and our paths. I believe in destiny and fate. So our paths are kind of already written. So we're already on this traje trajectory. So in a sense, it's destiny where you're going to end up. Now, I think a lot of people are on a path of awakening, are currently awakening, or maybe this is a real good opportunity for a lot more people to start to awaken. Yeah. So yeah. I think the key, absolute key, is to spend time in your own company and to understand who you are as a human being, to understand who you are based on your relationship with your parents, what you've um, inherited from the good qualities and then and the not so good qualities from the from your parents and it's just it's that time of self-reflection to spending time um, by yourself but at the same time I believe that life will always take you on the journey for you to learn the lessons that you need to to learn Definitely so the you know you're I'm sure like with, with the family Dale you're learning so much about 
you know, a, a, you know, but so many different things that that is essentially your spiritual path, and that's perfect and beautiful. Hello, Mali. Hello. 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 How are you, Mali? Are you good? Hello, Mali. <laughs> well, James, I'll, James and Chris, I'll just be two seconds, brothers. You continue. I'll be two seconds. <laughs> All right, mate. Uh, well, it's food time. Yeah. yeah. So, so I was just saying, Chris, like, I think life, you know, life kind of leads you on a, on a path and it's almost like we're just along for the ride. Like you're saying, it's almost like a cinema. You're just kind of watching yeah. it. And yeah. if you feel compelled to do yoga, meditation, ceremony, then you do it. If you don't, then you don't necessarily yeah. have to do it. Yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is he all right? <laughs> yeah, he's good, man. Yeah. How have you managed to keep the kids under control for this this time? I well, Gabrielle's bought a new got a new iPad delivered today, so I think they're all kind of a bit go crazy about it and probably having a go and stuff. So nice. that worked out very well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I, will, I will just be one minute. I'm just going to use the bathroom. Just one, just one minute. Yeah. Right no problem, mate. No problem, dude. So yeah, James, we've sh shared many hours together and many ceremonies. Um, I've known you for quite a long time now. So yeah, it's been absolute a pleasure to do this show with you, dude. It's yeah, been really you and you. It's awesome, and we should definitely do them more frequently and, and things. And uh, yeah, yeah, like there's lots of weird and wonderful things we can talk about and get more into the spiritual and the cosmic and stuff like yes, that. Yes. <laughs> Just one second. Two, two seconds, sweetheart. I'll be two seconds. Sorry, James, go on. I'm just saying um, we both have been um, positively influenced by Andrew Bartzis, the Galactic Historian, who's a, yeah. a teacher that we both uh, connected with and had readings with. And some of the stuff that he talks about, you know, is really interesting. And, and it's, um, you know, be interested in the different kind of conversations that we can have. But yeah. yeah. And from your from your perspective, James, a good question is what's your perspective of this virus and what's your so where where it's coming from or what do you feel the virus is here to do? What what's your perspective on it? So I think some people think this is a conspiracy, that it was created by the Chinese government or the American government and it's designed to help the system of control and domination yeah maybe create this new world order or, or whatever so there's the, the, the those who are in the conspiracy there there's a lot of conspiracy going around at the minute about this yeah for me i don't i don't believe that i i think this is a nat, um i mean how natural you know but is it with what's been going on in the markets and all you know i know there's a, a research lab in wuhan you know and but i think this is a, a natural this is more Mother Earth or Prime Creator doing yeah. this. I don't Finding think it's. I don't think it's a negative. Uh, yeah, balance. exactly. I don't think it's a negative force doing this. I think this is a positive thing. Um, and at university, I studied biology before I studied um, philosophy in, in India, and basically looking at the way populations. I did, did evolution essentially. And you look okay. at the population growth. So when populations get to a certain number, there has to be a yeah. die-off. There has to be, you know, because there's not enough resources. You know, it, uh, it could be an illness or a disease or, or some sort of natural disaster. There's this, this kind of culling of a population. I'm not saying that this is happening now. Yeah, but yeah. Also, when, when there's some sort of challenge, um, when a species is under stress, that's when evolution occurs. So yeah. I feel that this is a collective yeah. stress that we're yeah. all under yeah. and the planet collectively is, is going to evolve. So I per personally, I believe that this is, um, though short term has a lot of uh, negative um, consequences and, you know, we can all potentially get ill and that's obviously okay. not good. So on a short term, yeah, there are a lot yeah. of challenges, but on a, on a broader, on a larger scale, because everything happens for a reason, a larger scale, yeah. I feel that this is um, a beautiful opportunity for the planet to change and to go through yeah. major shifts uh, into, because again, we talked about it since 2012, the Mayan calendar, and there's lots of predictions that this is the time now, this decade, next decade, 
where the earth is going to change and transform. We're moving into this age of Aquarius where no one really seems to be exactly clear on when that's going to happen. But it's not just going to happen overnight. It's a process. Yeah, it's it can take decades. Process. It could take 100 years or, you know, more. But yeah. I think we are now, at, like, we're right in the middle of it. Like, this is, like, as, as real <laughs> as it can get in the sense that we are going through the shift that's been predicted and prophesied for thousands yeah. of years. Even. we are right in it it's the literally like part of the you know the apocalypse in that res- respect and the apocalypse means revelation it's revealing like the true the true self people are coming more into this into the self into the the true self and um yeah. so yeah for me it is a very positive thing and it is mainly maybe divinely orchestrated yet obviously there are lots of challenges and I don't want to diminish, uh, you know, make that as, as, as irrelevant. Yeah. It's, it's challenging. It's difficult for a lot of people, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. I, my general emotion and feeling is excitement. What about yeah. you, Chris? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely exciting. Um, for sure. Well, there's so much going through my mind about this topic, but um, you know, in the last couple of weeks I've, you know, I've had a lot of time alone in that time. I've, I've been, uh, I, I recommend this to everyone to um, use this time. There's a lot of spare time we have in our own space uh, is to really expand the knowing of, what, of, 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 uh, of oneself and just everything around you. We've got the internet right at the touch of our fingers. You know, there are so many people out there, dedicated souls, giving out inside information, giving out um, higher perspective knowledge. We should be using this time to, to do that. We should, be, we should be really, really reading the books, um, watching everyone on YouTube, just keeping up to date with everyone and what, what is going on. And I am very, very optimistic about, about this. Unfortunately, we will, have, we will see souls um, perish from this, um, from this virus, um, which there's, you know, there's no doubt of that. But, um, but uh, you know, from, from what I've been gathering, that, that this, this, is actually, this is a virus and, it, you know, it could have been manufactured, maybe not. Um, but, um, you know, wh- whatever happens here, um, now we are all, uh, just to add, now we're all indoors. Um, you know, we've got the, the, the white hats behind the scenes and, um, you know, the Alliance as, as, as what, what we, we know them as, um, they can now do a lot more, a lot more stuff. The good guys. The good guys. <laughs> the, good guys. the old guys are dying off. The, mm. the, the old dark guys are that's dying right, off. That's right. That's right. <laughs> the, 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 uh, each day that goes by these, these, um, these dark dudes, um, are getting pushed and pushed into a corner, and it's only a matter of time um, until we, we start to see these um, mass arrests, and um, we start to see this disclosure, this really disturbing future of, of um, leaking information that's coming out. is mm-hmm. is um, It's going to be a wild ride, guys. Like, wow. I mean, I know you guys know it. But um, I think very, very soon from now, now we're all indoors, I think we're going to start to see this acceleration of things going on behind the scenes and these changes are going to come so fast. But there, there's, there's my optimistic view. But I think um, for some people, you know, from what I've learned over the years is that through this transition, through this, um, this awakening, um, we're going. We're going to see. Uh, the, we, are, we obviously see two realities right now. We see the the, the old reality that's been here for thousands of years. Mm-hmm. This masculine, um, this dom- dominating matrix, and this new new reality that's forming. And um, I think what 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 I've learned is that um, many many souls are here. Have incarnated here for the the awakening. And for this transformation of consciousness, but there are also those souls that have decided to come to this plane to experience what it'd like to, what what it would it be like to to go through an apocalypse. Now, for those souls, and so I think we we 
Um, but I think a lot, I've, I've heard a lot of people are very optimistic in the sense that they think everyone can go through this and they're trying everything that they can to get everyone to understand and, and mm-hmm. raise their vibration, which is great, which is great. But I think we all need to come to this, this idea and just be at peace with that. Not everyone is going to go through this. I, I think a large majority for sure. And but being like, at peace with the virus as well, a lot of hate and a lot of negativity towards the virus and that in my perspective, was the root cause of, one of the root, many root causes of the virus anyway is our lack of uh, awareness and responsibility to the planet and uh, to our future generations as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Making, making peace with the virus for, per, for individuals is really important, like not being afraid of it because, again, what you look at becomes your reality. So if there's a lot yeah. of fear, a lot of paranoia, you know, you're setting a, a frequency a vibration to attract, you know, potentially some negative situation. But I think Chris, you brought up a, a good point there, and it's something that I've been thinking about a little bit recently. <coughs> is that sense of is this going to be a split? Like again, Dolores Cannon predicts. You know, she's saying that from 2012 to 2020, there's this separation from people who stay in 3D in fear, anxiety. And people who go more into that love, 5D, love, compassion, connection. So do we do it collectively as a, a species all together? Or is there some sort of separation in, or in consciousness? I mean, I think we can see that, really, that some pe- a lot of people ha- are waking up or have woken up to these more spiritual concepts and are living more authentically, but a lot of people still are living in fear, in scarcity. Um, And that's just in the UK, let alone the rest of the world, where a lot of people are just struggling to to get food on the table. So it's this really interesting thing. Is it all happening together or is there some sort of split? What do you think, Dale, about that? Uh, I, I feel that it's everyone's individual journey and I feel that when everyone's ready to go through this awakening in their own process, in their own time, um, I do feel that everyone's going to do it individually. I feel that there'll be a big split in, there'll be a high rise in communities, uh, spiritual communities, what uh, me you and Chris have been running. And uh, yeah, I think there's going to be lots of confusion and a lot of, uh, a lot of deaths, a hell of a, lot, hell of a lot more suicides as well. I do predict in the next few yeah. years, because a lot more people are going to be scared shitless. Like, when I went back to my old, uh, a lot of old people coming in and messaging me again because they're scared, they're unaware of what's going on. Mm-hmm. So I do feel there'd be so much panic and fear created by the media. And I do feel it's so important to cut off from the media. It's okay to uh, maybe watch it once a week and catch up with it and just laugh at it and just see it for what it is. They're lying to us about the numbers. They're lying to us all about most of the things they say and not take the news as gospel, not let the news affect you. There was a great uh, saying this David uh, guy on the Andrew show said, fear, fear itself. So, which I thought was really cool. And just, yes, it's cut down your exposure to the news, the papers, whatever you're reading, if it's making you go into fear, cut it down because in your own time, we will, in our own time, I feel we will go through our own awakenings and our own process and we'll be a signature frequency match for our soul family when we do go into that frequency. Um, and what do you think about it, Chris? Um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, just about, um, the, there is a lot of fear right now and obviously the, the media, um, are just fueling, fueling it all. And obviously now everyone is at home. There are a lot of people that are glued to the TV. <laughs> so, you know, I turned it on the other day and I was just like, oh my God. Yeah, then I turned <laughs> on the next week, the numbers have just risen, but they're still on about the same shit over, over and over yeah. and I realized. But they're not. When they're not giving us testing kits, they've thought about the economy first, and we're yeah. we're second. And hopefully, we'll, we'll, we'll the people watching the news will get angry enough to make a march, make a stance, and say, "Hang on a minute, we we can't have this government at the moment because it's not working for the people. It's not working for the planet. And if we keep doing this, the, I do believe these viruses will keep coming and coming until the great dream time awakening, which I do believe will happen this lifetime. I have a, a feeling it will happen." Um, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Completely, completely agree. Um, if I think I, I will, I will right now just suggest um, 
to anyone who who is uh, still watching to this point. Um, you know, for people to to just uh, listen to um, with further information on this is obviously Andrew Barsis. And uh, I've been, uh, there's a lot of information coming from David Wilcock at the moment. Um, and um, I've actually watched some very interesting videos from uh, a guy, um, as an Australian guy, um, I can't remember his name. There is also Christoph Melchizedek. He doesn't quite post that many videos these days, but he has some uh, beautiful, um, beautiful uh, sort of almost like upgradable upgrade energy um, to really see the, the the light side of this. And um, but yeah, yeah. I just thought I just thought I'd share that. that um, a Sa Sasha Stone. That was it. There's a guy called Sasha Stone. It's got a very, very, very interesting um, look on everything. So, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. So, yeah, brothers, it's been an absolute pleasure. And before we wrap this up, James, how can people get a hold of you and see what you're doing, see what your business is doing online at the moment? Sure. So if you're interested in online yoga and Pilates classes, um, then you can contact me through my uh, well, through the main website, www.yorkshirewellbeing.co.uk. So we're based in Harrogate. Um, doing lots I'll, of... pop the, uh, I'll pop the link in this YouTube as well at the bottom for you, dude. That'd be great. So if anybody needs a link, they can go on there. Cheers, dude. Yeah, so all my details are on there. And then I've got a YouTube channel, Gopala Yoga, where kind of putting on videos for meditation and, and all these kind of different things and some classes and things like that. So yeah, yorkshirewellbeing.co.uk. Uh, uh, that's probably the best place to, to connect. Thank you, brother. And it's an absolute pleasure talking to you, James. James and will be coming is. on the show once a month. And I'd like to say thank you to Chris as well for all your uh, wizard tech, techness or <laughs> lack, lack of camera we're, tech. <laughs> we're, uh, we're getting there. We're getting there with the tech. Uh, I should have a, 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 another webcam coming at some point and my internet connection should resolve itself. But, uh, but yeah, we'll get there, guys. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, so I'll have I'll have to head off now and uh, see to the kids. They seem to be um, coming upstairs now, so I'll best be going. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thank you so much, James. Thank you so Thank much, Chris. Bless you, Thank you. Thank you.